welcome to Last Three Brain Cells here. I'm Sammy Tiramini here, um, host of OA Now. Of course, the 2023 podcast of the year with OA Now. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, and one of the hosts in between Tiramini's and Unrated Tib- Neighborhood Television with my co-host, Ian Albert Weatherspoon. Ian, you're calling Hello. in this Ian, you're calling in this week. Um, how is everything going for you? Everything's going great. You know, uh, the Fords are spending money like it's going out of style. The Lions are the bell of the ball, and life is good. It is. Life looks like it's very good if you're a Lions fan. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the um, when you look at the draft, I mean, like, obviously, we're going to recap the draft here. I, You know what I did? I released this. I released the thing called the Sammy Grades. You know what I mean? The Sammy Grades. Do you like that? The Sammy Grades. The hmm. Sammy Grades, yes. I, I like the concept. The name needs a little bit of work. What do you mean the name needs a little work? How about, how about Uncle Sal's top draft grades? Ooh, that should be good. You know, that's very good. So I think you need to utilize the name Uncle Sal more often. Really? Really? I should. I should. You know what I mean? All right, let's get this let's get the show rolling here. Um, Chicago. Um Obviously, drafting Caleb Williams number one overall, um, no surprise here. I mean, like Caleb Williams number one pick played at um Oklahoma before transferring over to USC. Um, what's your thought process about Caleb Williams? You know, I'm not a, a scout by any means, but uh, many people say he's got uh, generational talent. I don't see it, and I'm. In May, I'm glad Chicago took him number one overall because I don't see it with him. I really don't. I don't, uh, not that I've studied him, but from the highlights I've seen, the interviews, he just, uh, I don't think he has what it takes. I mean, and a lot of people look at him, you know what I mean? I know you've heard of Tom Grossi, the um, YouTuber who's a big time Green Bay Packers fan. Um, Your best buddy. Your best buddy or my best buddy? Your best buddy. Why? What do you think he would do? I think you guys would be great on a podcast together. Oh, boy. That would be very interesting. You know what I mean? It would be like, a lot of yelling. Oh, sure. There would be a lot of yelling. I mean, like, but um, I really think with Caleb Williams, um, no surprise here. I mean, that I don't know why Chicago trade Justin Fields to Pittsburgh, but. But they ended up getting some value for and drafting Caleb Williams. Um, if if he doesn't pan out here, what do you think is going to happen over there in Chicago? Well, have they ever had a quarterback? Uh, probably. I think the last one I could think of was Jay Cutler. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'll ask you again: Have they ever had a quarterback? No. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Cutler wasn't much. I mean, really, they've had they've had no one. They've had a terrible run with quarterbacks. So yep. it could just be business as usual. Sure. You know, they could just mill along. They got some good skill players. They got a good defense and they're, you know, they might get average play from their quarterback. So I, mean, I think Chicago needs to address obviously line. Um, you know, I'm curious to see who they got protecting Caleb Williams. Cause it looks like he's going to be doing a lot of scrambling this year. It would it would seem that way, and I mean that's that's part of his game for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but the arm talent is supposed to be elite, and if he's not going to have time, I think he also might be a little undersized. I right. could be wrong. Maybe I'm just mm-hmm. maybe I'm just looking at him standing next to Cam Newton, where everyone looks undersized. But um, yeah, I mean they 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 don't seem interested in building the team the way say maybe the lions or Packers have where mm-hmm. they, they focus on the trenches on both sides of the ball and yeah. then they work, work out. So that, that to me is the way to build a football team. That's where the game is. Every game is at the line of scrimmage. Uh, nothing happens if the ball can't, you know, get past the line. So I, I honestly, I, I think it's more of the same. You never, you know, with Chicago, their defense, they have a, have a rich history of, of good defenders, good D linemen, but not on the O-line. No. And, um, and they're going to need that. And they especially, you know, they've got DeAndre Swift now. He can be very elusive, great one-cut runner. But you got to have holes opened up for that kid or he's going he's gonna to be like everyone else and just, you know, get tackled for a, a no gain or a short gain. 
And you're in a division with the NFC North. I mean, my goodness, you got Detroit, you've got Green Bay, Minnesota. I mean, like all those teams, um, Detroit and Green Bay, especially with stout offensive lines. Um, so I think, you know, so that'd be a very interesting challenge for Caleb Williams to um handle, especially in that division, and especially him getting booed like that in Detroit. Um, you know, obviously getting to see him. So that should be really interesting to see how that one goes. It is. I can't wait. The yeah. hype train's rolling in Chicago, and I and I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, the number two pick here in the draft, Jalen Daniels, going to the Washington Commanders. I still call him Redskins, but but when you look at this pick here with Jalen Daniels coming out of LSU, um, what's your initial thought process on Jalen Daniels? You know, it could be Lamar Jackson, or he could be, you know, part of the long line of running quarterbacks that. Uh, don't work and, and some would argue even Lamar Jackson hasn't worked even though he's won multiple MVPs he's had very little playoff success which is what it's really all about at the end of the day so the kids got to grow you know that's that's the tough part about the NFL is because you know unlike other leagues when you're drafted high or you're drafted period you're expected to play and with the number two pick you're expected to play right now um, there's no developmental time in no. this league. So you get, you get maybe three years mm-hmm. to, to continue to grow and show progress. So I think for him physically, he needs to grow. But when I look and, at the success of the number two pick, you know what I mean? Aiden Hutchinson, you look what he's done. But then of course you look at the bus, Zach Wilson. I mean, like he was a number two pick out of BYU. I mean, yeah. like, so you know, when you look at Jalen Daniels, can he get to the level of Hutchinson, or do you see him being a Zach Wilson? Well, I don't know, you know, because Aiden Hutchinson, some would say, oh, well, he went to the Lions. There's a reason they're picking so high every year. But their franchise has been turned around. Can, yep. the, can the commanders do the same thing with new ownership, uh, a completely new group of, uh, you know, upper management and coaching staff? Um, I think if there's ever a time, it would be now mm-hmm. because because of all that positive energy and potentially good hires. Um, but boy, I don't know. I think that division is tough, but he has Washington is a sneaky, um, I would say, talented team on the offensive side. So yeah, I mean, defense is still a question for me with Washington. Um, right. I, I just think when I, yeah, Philly's going to be tough. Dallas will be tough. Oh, Dallas, no, Dallas, I take it back. Dallas, it's hard to, for me to trust Dallas because, you know what I mean, especially with, um, you know what you're going to get with the Cowboys. They didn't do anything. <laughs> no, they didn't do anything except we signed Zeke Elliott. And we know how that went. So let's go to the Patriots now. Dar- I mean, like Drake May, the number three pick in the draft. Um, You know, no surprise here. I don't like the pick of Drake May as the quarterback. I'm just... I just don't think it's a good fit there. I mean, like, curious to see how he will do in New England, but I just don't like the pick here at three with New England with Drake May. You know, I think of all the quarterbacks, he's got the best measurables. So, you know, it's 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 just, you know, what's, what's New England's new regime going to be? We have mm-hmm. no idea. No. So coming off of you know, 20 plus years of Bill Belichick and uh, a system that is my way or the highway. It's so hard to tell, but of the quarterbacks, I feel like he's got the best measurables with maybe (laughs) the, the worst uh, surrounding talent. So Mm -hmm. it, it, it could be a real catch 22 here where he individually should be having success, but there's not the talent around him to, help to catch the ball, to run the ball. No, and I think that's going to be the problem. And I think, you know what I mean? You look at what they got. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, does he see the field early or does he stay on the bench? I mean, that's a big question I have with Drake May. He's going to have to start. Well, who's who's their backup? Don't they have a backup? I don't know if they got a backup. Because they traded Mac Jones. Oh, uh, what's his name? From Western Kentucky. Oh, I know. Bailey Zappi. Yeah, Bailey. Oh, oh Bailey Zappi's terrible. I mean, Bailey Zappi's so, terrible. Drake May will be starting. <laughs> you think, okay, okay. 
Bailey Zappi starting a quarterback, that scares me. Any day. So, let's go to number four here. At Arizona, Marvin Harrison Jr. You love this pick. Um, You know, he's from Ohio State, so I don't love it. But they say he's, you know, the, the most sure thing in this draft. So, it's, it's, it's what Arizona needed. They have, uh, you know, a quarterback that needs to really prove himself. And to give, to give that quarterback a Maserati in uh, Marvin Harrison is, you know, it's, it's, you know, it might be in a way somewhat foolish to take a skilled player up that high uh, in the draft if you're talking about building a franchise. But it's, it's prove it time for Kyler. So he needed yep. a weapon like that. And, it's sink or swim for Kyler and yep. you know, Marvin Harrison's not going to be affected no. one way or another. No. It's... And I also love what Arizona did defensively too. drafting Darius Robinson at 27, the edge rusher there. I mean, it is what well, I love what Arizona did. Um, they, they're definitely in my top five right now when it comes to in the NFC, when it comes to draft, I really like what Arizona did. And maybe they in that division become, you know what, maybe Seattle has been the past few years where they're, kind of mi middling around, uh, but still making the playoffs or, or a game out, um, you know, whereas Seattle, they might take a step back. So mm -hmm. I could see those two teams flipping in that division. Oh, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, the Chargers, Joe Alt, Jim Harbaugh, coaching that team, going big, offensive lineman. You like Joe Alt at, uh, as, at, as the um, pick for the Chargers? I may not like Harbaugh, but I like the way – I like his football philosophy. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, yeah, <laughs> as he said, our offensive linemen are weapons. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, it's hard not to like that with that draft capital with with Harbaugh and a completely new system coming in. You know, I, th I, th I think the Chargers could surprise. Mm -hmm. And then next, let's go to the New York Giants. This is who I really bash all the time here on this podcast. Um they went Malik Neighbors number six overall. I remember when they drafted Daniel Jones. I thought they would draft quarterback here. I mean, like I was going like I was talking to um Oakview assistant principal um Nick Casilla about um the Giants pick. And I said, you know the Giants are gonna draft quarterback. You know, they're gonna do something really they're gonna do something really stupid. Um, but they end up going neighbors and they got a wide receiver out of this, and I'm going like, what? That's not good. So what's puzzling. your puzzling? Yeah, it's really the Giants have been a puzzling franchise for years. I mean, like my goodness. I mean, you know, uh, to me, they look to me like they're the worst team in the East. Oh, without a doubt, <laughs> without a doubt. They have I Daniel mean, Jones at quarterback. I mean, they just paid Daniel Jones a ton of money, and in the first week against Dallas, he gets shut out. Yeah, yeah, and that was at home too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that was at home. York? It was in oh, New York. Like 40 to nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I still remember what happened last year when um when Seattle took um, a pick to the house against Daniel Jones. I mean, going, like, oh, my goodness gracious. But this franchise did knock off Green Bay, which was, I still can't believe that, with Tommy DeVito at quarterback. I'm going, like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's That's why you love the NFL, right? I mean, I know, it's you like, can never predict it. I mean, like, I mean, who would ever thought that Tommy DeVito would would do something like that? And then I think it was Tyrod Taylor almost brought him back from the dead against the Eagles. I still remember that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness yeah. gracious. And that was in Philly, too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in Philly, too, which made that that made that made it really bad. So I I could just imagine. Well, the Eagles had no coordinators that that year. They I mean, they had Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator, for goodness sakes. Yeah, uh, no, sir. He was not their defensive coordinator. He was their offensive coordinator. <laughs> he was their offensive coordinator. Which tells you they have, I mean, me and you could have done a better job, I think. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, I even, I can even, I can even like, you know, even a foot, even like a um, regular person can do a better job than Matt Patricia. I mean, like coaching that, coaching that coordinator spot. My goodness, last year. Which, by the way, where is he still in Philly or what happened to him this I think he's out. I think he's gone. I don't know where he went. I don't know okay. if he's not coaching right now. Yeah, I can't imagine he would be or should be. Yeah. Um, Tennessee, next up, they picked up J.C. Lantham at seven. 
You like this pick for the Titans, or you think it could have gone running back? I I have no opinion on the Titans. To me, they're a joke. I feel bad for Troy Anderley. You know what I mean? Uh, well, he should get a better better team. Well, but Troy Anderley's been a big fan of the Titans for years now. We've known this almost twenty years. I know, I know. It still confuses me, though. I know, I know. So here comes. So now here comes Atlanta. How would you? Why would they just sign Kirk Cousins? I think to a big contract, and yet yeah, they three, draft Mike. Yeah, and then they draft Michael Penix Jr. at eight overall. Funny. How Stunning, puzzling, so confusing. There's not enough weird words to describe that pick, but uh, I got nothing for you. I'm stunned. I was speechless when they did this. I'm going like, what? Why? You had you had other guys in there that they could have drafted, and instead they just go and get Michael Penix and go like, dude, you got other needs. You need a linebacker for good as sakes. And then Atlanta just. Why are you drafting a guy who's not even going to see the field for the next five years? Why? The Green Bay uh, model isn't working in Atlanta. Years. I don't think it'll be five years, but I mean, if people in Detroit thought the pick of Hendon Hooker in the third round was bad, what can you say about the pick of Michael Penix and num- a top 10 pick? Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. It's really insane. You know? But what Hooker, Hooker was coming off an injury. You know what I mean? He was coming off an injury. So, I give Lions, the Lions the benefit of the doubt here. Atlanta, nothing. Nothing. So I'm, I mean, with Kirk being older, perhaps they're, mm-hmm. they're hedging their bet and they feel, you know, hey, may, maybe this guy doesn't have a full season in them and mm-hmm. we're going we're gonna to hopefully not miss a beat going to Penix. Mm-hmm. Who knows what they're thinking? It's, it's, it's crazy, though. Then next up, number nine, Chicago, Romeo Azone. I mean, this is who Atlanta should have took. Um, goes to Chicago, goes with Caleb Williams, forms maybe a very good duo there. Um, you know, and then you add um, they got others on that line on that roster over there in Chicago. Um, do you think Chicago hit a home run here? <sighs> I know you're gonna. It's gonna. I, I see that sound, and you're not gonna like it. I mean, it's hard for me to to give any credit to Chicago. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, talent wise, okay, yeah. They say he's you know maybe top three receiver in this draft. They got him as the third receiver in the draft. Um, I don't know. I. It's hard. It's hard for me to give him credit because you know he's he's a big bodied guy but he doesn't have i would say the one attribute like okay when the lions went up and got jameson williams they could not let that speed you know get mm-hmm. away from them they had to have that speed that one thing you know marvin harrison potentially the best player in the draft neighbors all right they say speed got I'm length. not solo neighbors I'm that's that's kind of where I'm at with Rome, a doomsday, mm-hmm. um, especially <laughs> because they have Keenan Allen. Okay, I know yep. he's getting long in the tooth, yep. but that man's going to want his touches. Right. They have DJ Moore. DJ Moore, truly yep. one of the better receivers in the league. Yep. They have a good tight end. It's just there's only so many possessions where the ball can go around. Yeah, so but I, Chicago's I, I question like is going to be up elsewhere. front, though. Chicago's question can be up right. front, though. You know what I mean? That's going to be the question right. for Chicago. But, you know, it's a good move for them. You know, play them up with Caleb Williams, see what happens. They know each other in the Pac-12. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, next, we got Minnesota. Um, they had J.J. McCarthy at 10. Trade up with the Jets. I don't know why they did that, but they ended up getting... Also, Dallas Turner at 17 as well. I love these two picks the Vikings did. I mean, like, getting the quarterback, they need J.J. Um, Dallas Turner at linebacker, to me, is the home run hitter here for the Vikings. I really love what the Vikings did. So you you are in favor of the J.J. pick. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. That was, I. it was a much better upgrade than, I would I would have picked Sam J.J. Donald? Yeah, and Sam Donald. I would say JJ, he's gonna probably don't be surprised if he starts week one. Don't be surprised. 
But oh, he should. He, he should, should play Week One. Yeah. But the one I'm really happy about what Minnesota did was got Dallas Turner linebacker. I mean, Dallas Turner was a top ten projected pick coming in, and the Vikings got him at seventeen. That's insane. That is really insane for them. Yeah, I mean he's uh he's scary, and Minnesota's defense is already pretty darn good. Yeah. So that okay. pick I like a lot a lot more than the, the J, JJ pick, but. Mm-hmm. You know, when you don't have a quarterback, you got to do what you can to get one. So Mm -hmm. they're taking a swing. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. I mean, like, I I really think with Minnesota, um, I really like what they did. Are they a playoff team right now? I don't think so, but you never know. You know what I mean? You never know. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they do with uh, Justin Jefferson, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, His... I think he's due a deal either this off season or next. So, you know, they probably want to get that done sooner than later. So, yeah, especially with the free agency market going on right now, when you look at the quarterback market, but he's a wide receiver. So, you know what I mean? So well, that's 30 plus mil a year right there. Oh yeah. Um, let's go to the number 12, uh, number 11 pick New York, the jets. Olio Fashu offensive lineman at number 11. You like this pick? Um, not knowing the player very much, I like the the fact that they drafted an, an alignment. You yeah. know what I mean? They need they need an alignment. Keep, they gotta keep their forty year old quarterback upright for at least a year here. So oh sure, definitely. Um, and then number twelve, Denver, Bo Nix. I don't like this pick at all. I would have been more. Learning. It would have been funny if we had Jaron Stanham versus Zach Wilson. Now we had those three guys plus Bo Nix into the fold. I mean, this has got beautiful disaster written all over it. Not to mention, Sean Payton is the ringmaster of it all. And yeah, I know. That's nuts. scary. So, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but, boy, mm-hmm. it's like, uh, you know, you can definitely have too many quarterbacks because there's very few that are good. So, if you have, like, four, you have zero. Yeah, and I think it'll be very interesting to see how this one goes. So, it'll be interesting to see. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Vegas, 13, Brock Bowers, tight end. Like this pick or not? I guess. You know, they got Gardner Minshew now. So, that, that is a guy that needs all the help he can get. Mm-hmm. Um, you got two tight ends. You got Devontae Adams still. I believe they still have Jacoby Myers. Mm-hmm. Running back's a question. They always have good old line play. You know, they need a big year and they're in a, in a really tough division. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, being in Las Vegas for what, three years now, l- limited success. I think their first year they, they threatened to make the playoffs. You know, they, it's, I, I don't know. I, to me, this is like an Atlanta move. You know what I mean? Where they just keep piling up top 15 or first round weapons where, it, it where does it ultimately go? Atlanta hasn't been successful in a long time. So same with same with the Raider franchise. So I don't know. I mean, uh, that's another guy too that was thought of as a you know a top three type talent in the draft. So Vegas said, you know what, we're not going to let him slide anymore. Let's just grab him. And I guess at the at the end of the day, you can't hate mm-hmm. taking a swing on talent like that. Yeah, and I think that'll be it. I like. I think Powers would do all right. I mean, you got another tight end over there in Vegas as well. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, dear boys, New Orleans Saints went offensive line to Talise Fagal at number 14. Like, I love this pick for the Saints. I really do. I think he's going to be a really good player for you guys. Hey, 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 hey. they're my secondary team then, all right? Of course. <laughs> Lions are, Lions are numero uno. But, um, no, definitely, definitely. They're, uh, now, see, they're in an interesting position as well because they've had what I'd call middling success mm-hmm. since since even the later days of Drew Brees. So, but this is how you can at least sustain and be a contender. You know, continuing to draft on the line. They have a quarterback they paid a lot that I don't think they like very much in Derek Carr, but they're going to give him. They're going to give him the best shot. They still need wide receiver help, but. At least they're uh, they're giving themselves a chance here, and I think that makes sense. I mean, like obviously, um, you know, and I, it'll be interesting to see. But I like the line. I like the um, offensive lineman they got. Um, 
15, our first defensive player of the draft taken here. Um, Latu Latu of, of UCLA going to the Indianapolis Colts at number 15 overall. I mean, I, I like this pick. I really do for the Colts. I mean, getting the, one of the best defensive edge rushers in the draft. Yeah, in a draft that didn't have a lot of talent edge-wise, um, they, they took their shot on the best one. The injury history is very concerning. Um, but, you know, a team like the Colts where they, you know, I think really pride themselves on defense, even though you think of their rich quarterback history, um, the last few years they've been pretty darn good defensively. So adding to that mix is, you know, you can't go wrong. And I think it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. And I think, you know, I think that'll be curious to see how this one really, really goes. And I, I and um, I, I mean, like, I like Latu a lot. And I think it'll be something to really watch for. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Seattle at 16, Byron Murphy, defensive tackle. What's your thoughts about this pick? That's, well, that's another team that is all about defense and coming out of Texas thought of as one of the best or the best D tackle in the draft. They already have, you know, three, four players on that D line. So ah, man, McDonald's. I don't want to love it, but I do love it. And McDonald's their head coach too. Mike McDonald is their head coach. So that should be fun. You know, exactly. And I think Seattle, they, they could be in that race for the final spot in the NFC. I mean, like I'm, Looking on my NS, looking at my playoff projections right now, and I'll announce those on the show right now. What I'm seeing right now on the early parts of it, so we'll do that. We'll do that later on in the show here. Um, number eighteen, Cincinnati, big offensive lineman Amaris Mims. I love this pick for Joe Burrow. I mean, like my goodness, right. Cincinnati had no. I mean, Joe Burrow was basically almost got his head chopped off almost every until he got hurt, and right. You know, I love this pick what Cincinnati's got. I really do. I agree. I mean, they he's the highest paid quarterback in the league and he deserves, you know, him and Mahomes the best mm-hmm. protection possible. Because mm-hmm. we need those guys playing. So absolutely. I think it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. So yeah, I mean like I like Mims a lot. Um, number nineteen, they got the Rams. They love picking guys named Jared. Jared verse, edge rusher, nineteenth overall. You like this pick? It's a fast. It's a fascinating one. Um, I can't remember the knock on verse. I believe it said he's a one trick pony. Yeah. Um, but they losing talent like Aaron Donald on that. You know, I know he's not an edge, but in that, in that, on that line, as a pass rusher, um, gotta have it. So it's hard to hate on anything the Rams do. They, you know, I I really despise them and their fans as a franchise, but I can't, um, you know. They do things right. Yeah. They and, do. And they, this was the first time they had a first-round pick since they drafted Jared Goff, the number one overall in 2016. So, you know, so that was it. So they ended up working out well for them. Uh, number 20, Pittsburgh Steelers, Troy Fontu, offensive lineman. Like this one? You know, I think the Steelers may have had one of the better off-seasons, top five off-season and drafts in totality. Uh you know, that's why they're the Steelers, man. And, you know, what they did with quarterback is going to be very, very interesting because, like I just said about Denver, if you have four quarterbacks, you have zero. The same applies if you have two, you have zero. You have. Um, I mean, they got Justin they, Fields and Russell Wilson. Which, Russell Wilson, you know, they both have flashed. Obviously, Russell Wilson is one of the greats of this generation. He, he, he really looked baked in Denver. Um, he had his moments, but it just it's going to depend on his attitude. It's going to depend on, you know, I think they're going to roll with the, whoever gives them the best chance to win. They're not going to play politics. Mm-hmm. They're not paying either a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, again, with, with um, you know, like I said, with uh, New Orleans, if you have a quarterback you don't necessarily love, but – that person has shown the ability. You've got to give him the best chance to to sink or swim, mm-hmm. and you can't you can't stack the cards against them. No. You know, so so Pittsburgh, I think, with the weapons they have, the O line play they have, the defense they always have. You know, with Cleveland being as good as they are, 
Baltimore, that division is an absolute gauntlet with Cincinnati. It's, I mean, I don't know. They're the Steelers, so I'm not going to knock anything they ever do usually. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's go to Miami. Chop Robinson drafted edge rusher. I love Chop. I think he's going to be a key for Miami in an in AFC East. He could be. Um, what I think of when I think of Miami is like, okay, freak athlete you. You know what I mean? Or speed you. They have, they have all the speed in the world. But, man, they don't look so hot in December or January when they have to go outside and play. Right. So, it's cold. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they are not used to it. They're not They're not gritty enough. They're just kind of a more finesse team, in my opinion. <laughs> they got to um, learn to win games in the cold. I well, mean, they got to learn to punch people in the face, too. Right. You know, they can't just try to run by everybody mm-hmm. because we saw what – you know, someone like Snead did to Tyree Kill in, in sub zero weather. So, yeah, Chop has got great measurables, obviously, great speed from the combine. Um, he could be Micah Parsons. He could be, I, I name your bust yeah. edge. And I, I don't know. Um, it could be a reach. It at could that, be a reach. Top, top 20 be. pick. So, it'd be interesting to see how this one goes. Philly, I thought, got one of the best corners in the draft. Quinny and Mitchell, DB, right. 22. You love this pick yeah. for the Eagles? Man, I'm not going to say I love anything about anything the Eagles ever do. I don't like them at all. <laughs> but with that being said, yeah, this is, a, this is a good pick. Their secondary was awful. They're old. Um, and, you know, they need someone like a prime Darius Slay who – May have been undersized, may have not gone to the best college program. Obviously, Mississippi State's a little better than Toledo, but he's a dog. He and is. He is going to be in your back pocket all game long. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's absolutely what Philly needed. In Jacksonville, next up, they picked up Brian Thomas, wide receiver. Um, I know Jacksonville needed a wide receiver pretty badly. And I'm a little surprised Brian Thomas is on the board here, but. I just was a little surprised. You know what I mean? I I, I don't like the pick that Jacksonville did, especially no. with the con with the cons. They're falling off a cliff, man. They I are. Know. <laughs> Since they were eight and two last year, I don't think they've done anything right. No, they have not. And it is what is with them. Next, the hometown Detroit Lions stealing a trade, trading with the Dallas Cowboys, taking arguably the best corner in the draft in Terry and Arnold. You love this pick, don't you? I do. I do. Um, you know, <laughs> going to Alabama, playing for Nick Saban, measurables, pedigree, all of it's there. Um, corner is so volatile, though, you know, yeah. and it all, <laughs> what really worries me. Okay, corner is one of those positions where, similar to quarterback, there's, you don't have a lot of developmental time, but you do have a leash, a couple-year leash, mm-hmm. you know, to get acquainted because those positions are just so different in the NFL. But I don't I don't like – I'm just going to be straight up with you. I don't like some of the talking I'm hearing from, uh, from Tehran Arnold. I don't like my rookies being cocky, especially – a rookie who's going to be asked to guard people like Justin Jefferson. We mentioned Keaton Allen, DJ Moore, Rome Madunze earlier. This division is loaded. And I think there are some really good divisions in football. I don't know if this will ever top the AFC North, but I think this could be a top three division in football. And who knows what Jordan Love is and, and the Packers. If they're truly legit. But, man, I, I just – I. Maybe I'm jaded and I'm hearing it too much, but I, I just need uh, I need to let the talk happen on the field. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, the Green Bay Packers, I, I don't like the Jordan Morgan pick at 25. I thought they could have went Barton or um, DeGene or Cooper DeGene. Um, yeah. I just thought that um, I, I just I think it, Green Bay reached here with Jordan Morgan at their um, as their offensive line. I thought they could have went Barton. You know, I'll just say that's a shame. Yes, it is. Um, speaking of that, Graham Barton went to Tampa at 26. I love the pick there. I mean, obviously him with Baker Mayfield, you know what I mean? So 
you know. And that division is up for grabs. Oh, yeah, especially with Atlanta's mishap, some New Orleans, I think, is an up-and-coming team, and Carolina's a mess right now. Right. That division is completely up for grabs, and, and as it looks now, the, you know, three teams have a shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, an equal shot, I'd say. Yes. Kansas City traded with Buffalo, which is, I still can't believe they did this. And right. they're drafting, they drafted Xavier Worthy, the speedy wide receiver from Texas. And we know what he's been capable of doing. Patrick Mahomes has got himself a, a shiny weapon, very similar to the Cheetah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is, um, that's what they needed, man. Their window's here. Their team is the late first round. Go ahead, take a receiver. Yeah. Um, they're pretty, they're pretty well set. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everywhere else, having won back-to-back Super Bowls, Kelsey's getting a little long in the tooth. Um, some of their O-line, you know, they replaced a lot, but their defense is young. I, you know, I, it's hard to hate on that pick at all. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Um, next up, the Dallas Cowboys who the Lions traded with. Uh, they got um, Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, uh, 29 overall. Um, you like the pick for the Cowboys? Or no, you I think do, that- and I, I actually like the Cowboys draft, I thought. Mm-hmm. You know, um, from from having a lackluster free agency trade type offseason, not doing much, um, I thought they did good in the draft. And, you know, maybe they're just looking at it as, okay, we've we've invested a lot in these guys we have now. They're under contract. They were they were almost unstoppable at home last year. Um, let's just let that group roll again and see if they if the bad taste in their mouth is going to you know translate into fighting or are they going to turtle and we're going to blow this whole thing up and let Dak go and you know so yeah well, I, I can't they're going to have to pay Dak if they do resign him I mean you look at what Jared Goff got with right. the Lions I mean like you know at Dal- I mean Jerry Jones is going to have to pay um, Dak you know that well. <laughs> To me, it looks like they're kind of saying, you know, to Dak, are we going to have to pay you? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Dallas, I think there's, they're just. Well, if they let Dak go, what other options they got? I mean, Trey Lance, I know. I, I'm <laughs> curious to see what they do with Trey Lance. I mean, like, Ugh. still. No, I mean, they, they would have to blow the whole thing up. Mm-hmm. And they'd have to try to trade him for, I, 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 I don't know. Could they get a first round pick for Dak? Am I crazy to say that they would? Am I crazy I to even think that they wouldn't? I don't. Maybe I, you don't know that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. There's just to me in Dallas, there's no leadership. No. You and know McCarthy's the leader that is there, there is a nut. They lost to the Packers, who was a seven seed, the first ever two seed to lose to a seven seed. They got. They didn't lose, man. They got smoked. I know they got smoked. I mean, like, still. I mean, that's inexcusable. My goodness gracious. You know so. Baltimore, um, 30, I mean, 30th overall, they went with Nate Wiggins at DB. Um, I don't like this pick here. I, I think Wiggins has got to get stronger um, for Baltimore, especially playing in the AFC North. Um, I just don't like this pick that Baltimore had. You know? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I they're known for their D, man. So yeah. I, can't, I can't say it's a bad pick. No. But, He's in their system. Yeah. Uh, he'll probably turn out pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, 31 overall, San Francisco. They got Ricky Purcell, wide receiver from Florida. I, I, I'm curious. Puzzling. To, yeah, puzzling. Because you have Brandon Ayuk there. You got um, you got Debo. Debo. I mean, like, he's going to be your third wide receiver. And you still got Rum CMC there. You got Kato there. I don't understand this. Crazy. Pick. Crazy. I mean, I the only it. reason why I could think was maybe, maybe you could trade Ayuk, maybe. I don't know. You know? Well, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to. Being, I mean, they're gonna have to. Maybe they won't, but I think it's likely that they. Or I think it's it's pretty clearly they should. They should. I mean, and then or the, they should have drafted this kid, right? And then the last pick of the draft here, um, Xavier Leggett uh, to Carolina, at thirty-two from South Carolina. I mean, Carolina traded with Buffalo. I don't know why Buffalo traded um, again with Carolina, but. They end up getting well, they need a lot of picks. Yeah, they, they do. a lot of pieces, so I, I don't know. Yeah, but still. I mean, it's like, kind of crazy, but you're right. The windows now, mm-hmm. it, it's clear that they are going to put it all on Josh Allen and just say, hey, hang with us, you yep. know? Let's see what you can do by yourself, but we, we 
they got to develop some pieces. Oh my goodness, yes they do. So ready for the Sammy grade? Ready for the um, Uncle Sal grades here? I let's grade. open up Uncle Sal's grade book. Okay, let's do. We're gonna go from division here, and then we'll do my top five. AFC first. Let's go with the AFC North. I gave Baltimore a B in this draft. I gave Baltimore a B. I'm, like I said, I didn't like the Wiggins pick. Um, I thought they were decent. Um, what's your thoughts on the Ravens? Uh, they're one of the organizations I'll never argue with, and I'm also never going to argue with the Uncle Sal grade book. Yep. Next, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I gave them an A. You know what I mean? I love what they did. Agreed. Free agency. I love what they did with Wilson and J and Justin Fields. Um, both of them, you know, I think they're going to have bounce back years. Both of them. It wouldn't surprise me if both of them see the field together. I mean, it could be possible. That would be weird and crazy and slightly possible. Yeah, but it's I, possible. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think about yeah. it. Pittsburgh doing doing trick plays with both quarterbacks on there. Yeah. To me, though. Yeah. I, I wouldn't do it. I, I think Russell Wilson's a waste of a, an 11 man spot. If you got fields on the field, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. um, Cincinnati, I'm giving them an A, especially for the big offensive lineman. Um, defense. I'm a little worried about with them, um, but I give Cincinnati an A on the grade book here. You like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. I can live with that. Cleveland without a first round pick um, gave up a lot of peace for the Deshaun Watson trade. Cleveland's a mess. I mean, like, they don't have – I mean, like, they got Deshaun Watson's their quarterback, but they had, they played so many different quarterbacks this year where I just – their defense is nasty. I like their defense, but I gave their draft a B. You know what I mean? What do you think? I don't know how they did what they did last year. It's laughable what they did for Deshaun Watson looking at it, but, again – these teams will do some crazy things to get a quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they got to live with that decision. Um, they, I thought they survived pretty well last year with that decision, mm -hmm. all things considered. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That defense is going to have to win the day and they, and Deshaun is going to have to give you a 75% of, of his prime. Oh yes. Next, the AFC East, we got the Jets. I gave the Jets a B. Um, Aaron Rodgers coming back. That's going to be scary. Um, could he be in line for another MVP year? Oh, man. With the Jets? <laughs> With the I, Jets? I don't see that, but you never know. The guy's a freak. Who knows? I mean, um, he's certainly got some weapons. You know, Garrett Wilson's going to finally have a, or yeah, yeah. To have a quarterback, yeah. finally. Right, and he he's done some crazy things with no quarterback play. So, yeah, I mean they are they are all in. Yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. Um, New England, as I mentioned earlier, I gave I gave him a D. I didn't like the quarterback. Um, I, I know you like Drake May at quarterback. I'm not a big fan of him. They don't have a lot of pieces around there with New England. Basically, they got a complete nothing. rebuild. They got nothing over there. So, yeah. It reminds me of, a, in a little way, you know, Stafford coming to the Lions. Mm -hmm. You know, except Stafford did have Calvin. That was the one, which is a, it's a big one. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a complete rebuild and just this kid's going to get massacred for a few years. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and then the next one here, I'm going to give the Miami Dolphins. I gave him a C. You know what I mean? I, I just think, I don't know. You're right about the mental toughness. I'm a little concerned about the mental toughness. So that's a team that scares me a little bit. Yeah, I, you know my thoughts. Yep, Buffalo, I gave them a B. You know what I mean? I gave Buffalo a B. You know, you know, and I don't know if I, I don't know if I see any upside. You know, they got Keon Coleman. I'm really excited about that with Buffalo, but you know, but there's still some question marks with Buffalo. Big time. Um, next we got the Kansas City Chiefs. I gave them an A because I love the Xavier Worthy pick. Dress the wide receiver needs. There's not a lot of weaknesses with this team. I mean, not a lot. No, very few, if any. Yep. Vegas, I gave them a B. Quarterback's an issue. Either you got Gunnar Meshu or um, Derek O'Connell. Is it O'Connell, the quarterback? Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're screwed. <laughs> yeah. So, I gave them a B for that. Chargers, I've given them an A because of what they've been doing. I like 
I like them going the Michigan way with the offensive line before, and then going running back with Blake Corm. Um, Wait, they didn't get Corm. No, they didn't get Corm. Oh, I lied. L- uh, the Rams did. Rams did. My bad. I apologize. There, Other LA team. I like I like what the um, Chargers are doing going offensive line. Give me right. an A for them. Denver, I give them an E. You know, <laughs> I give them an E. Not an F. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, I saved an F for another team, so don't worry about that. Oh, I think I know who. Yeah, so, I mean, like, but I gave Denver an E. I mean, like, their salary cap's a mess, especially with still having to pay Russell Wilson a ton of money. <laughs> you know, my yeah, goodness. it's crazy. I, if it weren't for Carolina, I feel like Denver would be the biggest laughing stock in the league. <laughs> yes, I agree with you right now. I agree with you there. <laughs> I mean, and then the AFC, and the AFC South, Indy, I give an A. I'm curious to see what Anthony Richardson does at quarterback. I'm really excited to see how he does. You know, it could be it could be something special, man. Somebody I think a lot of people forgot about. Yep, Houston A. C.J. Stroud, legit. Lame the AFC South title. I'm really excited to see what Houston does. They got proven playmakers. I love what Houston's done. You know what I mean? They didn't get a they didn't get a draft pick, but really excited what they did. Um, Houston versus uh, the Lions. It's going to be a primetime game this year. Ooh, it should be interesting. Yeah. Jacksonville, I give them a B. Like I said, I feel bad for Tony Khan. Um, he do, he does own AEW as well, so you know, so I do feel bad for him. But Jacksonville, I I don't know if I can trust Trevor Lawrence, but he's still the only la- He's still the quarterback who's still on on his team being drafted. You know what I mean? So. And they got Doug Peterson. I mean, he's no joke, but eh, yes, yeah, we talked about them earlier. Yeah, they're 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 sinking quick. Yes, they are. And then Tennessee, I give them a B. Um, like I said, they they do they they, they address. They got J C Latham, but losing Derrick Henry hurts. So we'll see how this one goes. So my top five draft teams. Um, I would say my five is Kansas City, Indianapolis number four. Houston, number three, Cincinnati, number two, and the team I felt in the AFC had the best draft overall, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm-hmm. I I agree with you. Yeah, Pittsburgh. I agree on that. I love Pitt. I mean, yep. like, Pittsburgh had the best draft, I think, you know. So, we'll see how that one and goes. And that's coming from a Ravens fan. Yes, it is. Um, NFC, I get the NFC North all A's. Um, Minnesota, an A. Chicago in A, Detroit in A, Green Bay in A minus. So, what's your thoughts? What do you think about the Lions selecting two, you know, like developmental pieces? I in, think it'll uh, be okay. In Manu, the the tackle, and then the safety slash they're going to play him as running back supposedly, Baki out of Utah. Brad um, Holmes and Brad Holmes, you trust. That's how you got to look at it with the Lions. True, true. But I take you back to last year when they selected Broderick Martin, who played in like a game, yeah, for a drive maybe, mm-hmm. and then uh, Hendon Hooker, who didn't see the field. So yeah, those were two third round picks, and so to get, you know, a team in this window, it has to be all hands on deck, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I don't know. That's the one thing that scares me. But like you said, in Brad Holmes, we trust. Yep. And in Dan Campbell, we trust. Because yep. the guys that are going to see the field, uh, for the most part, are going to be pre- prepared to play. Mm-hmm. NFC East, we got Philly, I gave them an A. Dallas, I gave them a B. The Giants, I gave them a C. And Washington, I gave them a B. So what's your thoughts on the AFC and the NFC East? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much with you there. I like the Cowboys draft. I would say um, second to the Eagles. Mm-hmm. And in Washington, yeah. obviously, I don't like the Giants draft, obviously, because they still got Daniel Jones on their roster. I mean, like they didn't draft the quarterback. That scares me a little bit. Unless Tommy DeVito is ready for the um for the um for the hype. Train. I'm. Is he, is I he love. It. I think Tommy. Team? I think Tommy DeVito's still on their team. I gotta look. I gotta look. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you know. And then the um a- the NFC West. I give all the teams in the NFC West, with the exception of San Francisco A's. I give San Fran a B. 
You know, I just don't understand the why to see Ricky Perso going over there. I just don't understand right. it at all. I mean, right. really don't understand it one bit. And uh, they, they're another great franchise, though, man. Especially with this group, Shanahan and what's his name? Yes, uh, Brock dude, Purdy. Uh, I'm at the general. Excuse oh. me, general manager. Lynch. Braxton Lynch, Lynch, John Lynch, John Lynch, yeah, John Lynch, yeah. Yep. And then the A, and then the NFC South. I gave New Orleans an A. I gave Tampa an A. I gave Carolina a D, and then I gave Atlanta an F. You know. So that's your worst team. That's the worst team I felt who had the worst draft: the Atlanta Falcons. You that thought it would be Carolina? Hard to argue. You know. Right. Uh huh. It's hard to believe they may have had a worse draft than the Panthers, but yeah, here um, we are. Yep, and then here are my early projection of playoff teams, Ian. So oh, baby. You may, here we go. You, you and me are definitely going to have some disagreements here, but... There might be some side bets coming, too. Oh, sure, yes. I think the number one team in the AFC is Kansas City. I mean, you know, with Mahomes and all of them, I think Kansas City is going to be a team to beat. Um, I think the Chiefs right now, I like where they're at. Patrick Mahomes, Pacheco at running back, um, Worthy at wide receiver. Kelsey at tight end. I mean, Kansas City, their defense is solid. Um, they got the complete package for their KC. Defending Super Bowl champions. So, right. you think that makes sense? Champs. Mm-hmm. Number it two. Does, I wonder, though, if their wide receiver issues could come back to bite them here because, you know, Rice was primarily their only guy. He's in legal trouble. You're maybe relying on a rookie. We'll see. They pasted mm-hmm. it together last year and the year before. We'll see what they can do this year. Mm-hmm. The number two team I have in the AFC is the Houston Texans. Um, Houston, Ooh. I'm curious. I'm excited for Houston. I love what Houston's Over Baltimore. Done. Over Baltimore, yep. Wow. I think Houston's going to have a great – I think – I love what – um, you know, I really love their quarterback. I think they're running – they got a – the running games concerns me a little bit, but right. I think, you know, they got proven wide receivers – I mean, I love what... No, he, no sophomore slump for uh, Stroud. No sophomore slump Stroud for C.J. Stroud. No no slump. Nope. Number three, I got Baltimore. Lamar, obviously. Defense still scares me a little bit. They lost Mike McDonald, who's the new head coach. Uh, new head coach in Seattle. Um, that's why I got Baltimore at three right now. Um, okay. You know. Number four, you think I'm going to be crazy? I got the Jets. Aaron Rodgers is going to get in the playoffs for some reason. Because the because of the I market, I don't think you're crazy. I don't think you're crazy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's but, likely. Yes. Uh, you know, the number five I got is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh's gonna be back in the Pittsburgh will be in the thick of it. I think Pittsburgh's an up and coming franchise. They're getting better. Um, I like what they're draft. I like their quarterback. Uh, I like the quarterbacks, both of them. Um, so Pittsburgh, I have as my number five team right now in the AFC. I can dig that. Number six is going to shock you. Right. Watch out for the Indianapolis Colts. Okay. I mean, Jonathan okay. Taylor back. Um, they got, I mean, their defense is up and coming. Um, I like what the Colts have been done. Anthony Richardson, we haven't seen the highlight reel of him yet. I'm very curious to see how he does. So, I think Anthony Richardson's going to have a monster year. You just watch. And then number seven, you think I'm going to be crazy here. But I got the Cleveland Browns at number seven. Wow. Yeah, I got them. Okay, even. so you don't have you don't have Cincinnati anywhere. <laughs> I have them. I have Buff. I don't think Buffalo's gonna make it. I don't think Vegas is gonna make it. I don't think Cincinnati's gonna make it. Wow. Jacksonville or Miami. I mean, it's hard for wow. me. I mean, like I can't trust. I love Tua over at Miami. I love Burrow and Cincinnati. Um, I just, I just don't think that, you know what I mean? Like with Cincinnati defensively, I just don't trust them defensively. And, okay. and then Vegas, I just don't know if I can trust them. Buffalo, no. they just got shredded with right. their, um, and then Jacksonville, I can't trust Jacksonville one bit. And then Miami comes down to the defense. It's hard for me to trust Miami. Um, that's why I got the Jets over them right now in the division, okay. but it is what it is. So I think I think the only thing I'd disagree with I might I might you know differentiate on the order a little bit but I would have Cincinnati instead of uh, Indian there. Okay, so that should be interesting. I mean, but it should be a fun though. It should be really fun. You know what I mean? The uh, AFC. I can't wait. And then you have the NFC here. 
Now, this is going to shock some people, okay? All right. Number one, I got the San Francisco 49ers. No surprise here. Um, You know, they got Run CMC, Brock Purdy. Number two, the Detroit Lions. You know what I mean? Look at what they got. Jared Goff, running game's back. The core of that team's back. The line is back. I think they're better mm-hmm. than they are last year. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Detroit Lions are going to make a ton of noise this year. You just watch. I think the Lions are going to have a big, big year right now. They need to. Yep. They are all in, man. They're all they, in. They doled out a lot of money. Yep. And it's got to pay off. Yep. Number three, I got the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I mean, like, Jalen Hurts at quarterback coming back. Um, running games with Saquon, I think that's going to be huge. It's basically like my fantasy football team last year, you know? You know, from the ON TV <laughs> League. That's basically what the Eagles are. It's basically my fantasy football team of last year. You know? So I'm curious to see how they do. Defense still scares me a little bit with them, especially up front and that linebacker. Um so Does Hurts Hurts give you any pause? I mean, he did not look good uh, no. the back half of the year. He did not. And I think obviously the changeover coordinator is gonna be huge for Philly. All I, right. I think Philly could be okay. Number four, I got Tampa Bay. I mean, Tampa wow. Bay, Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans. Um, I just think Tampa just wins that division by default. Um, okay. They win that division by default. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can't, can't disagree. It's hard to disagree. Mm-hmm. Number five, I got the Green Bay Packers. Because Green Bay, Jordan Love, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, You got, um, Mm -hmm. you got, you know, Jaden Reed. I mean, like, their defense is solid. You got Luke Musgrave. Their defense looks good. I still don't trust Quay Walker one bit. Um, but, you know, because Quay Walker, every time he plays the Lions, he does something really drastically stupid. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so, but I think Green Bay, you know, what they did against Dallas last year, and then they took San Fran to the brink. Um, I think Green Bay... If Jordan Love keeps developing, they're going to be a scary team in the North. I mean, do I think are they better than the Lions? Probably not, but I just think Green Bay right now, I like where they're at right now. Fair enough. Number six, I got the Rams. I got the um, I got the Matthew Stafford Rams. You got Puka Nakua. You got Atwell. You got Jordan. You got Williams at running back. I mean, Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Yep, forgot to mention him. Lines a question for me with them. Defense is a question for me with the Rams. Um, so Stafford's going to have to score at least maybe 40, 35, 40 points for them to have a chance to win. I mean, cause I don't trust that Rams defense one bit. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's, mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds like the story of Stafford's life. And number seven, this is going to shock you. Okay. And it'll shock a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans, but I got the Minnesota Vikings number seven. Interesting. I like, they got questions at running back. Actually, no, take my Aaron Jones at running back. Um, you got Justin Jefferson. I think Jordan Addison's on that team. Yep. Um, and then you have um their defense is nasty. Um, I I think the Vikings are in line to make have a big year. Do I think are they better than the two other teams in the NFC North? The Lions and the um, Packers? No. But I just think that with JJ McCarthy at quarterback, he's going to lead the Vikings, I think, to the playoffs. I th- I just think Minnesota with where they're at right now, I really like where the Vikings are at right now. I think they're going to be a scary group this year. You just watch with the Vikings. And then I have Dallas left out of the playoffs. Um, wow. I, ha- I-, I just don't like – I just think Dallas is, you know, Dak's going to struggle. If he gets hurt, they're done for. Um, I just don't like the pieces that Dallas has right now, and I think that's going to be where I-, I just think they're going to be left out of the playoffs. And – you know, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, AFC, the NFC South, I just don't trust that division. Chicago, I just think they're maybe at least two, three years away. Um, and then, in, you know, and I think, you know, when I look at the um, rest of the division here, the Giants, I don't think it's going to be very good. Washington's going to struggle a little bit. So I think right now with the teams right now in the division, I think these are the top seven teams in each division. So... All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Ian and I are going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And we will all see you all in the fall. Take care and God bless all.